A Democratic-aligned group is fighting to deny RFK Jr. ballot access in New York State. Now that group, Clear Choice, a Democratic PAC, is attempting to make the case that the New York address RFK Jr. listed is not his real home, and thus the 45,000 signatures he collected in order to obtain ballot access in New York are invalid. RFK Jr. is struggling to stay on the ballot in New York, but it seems all anyone can talk about is the bear he dumped in Central Park a decade ago. Kennedy, who says he found the cub roadside and put it in the park as a prank, seemed to understand the story wasn't going to go over well in the media. The news and Kennedy's video reaction to it overshadowed his court case that began Monday in Albany. There, a group of voters tried to remove him from the ballot, arguing Kennedy falsely claimed to live in New York. The case is being backed by Democrat-aligned PAC Clear Choice, who is hoping to get Kennedy off the ballot. For context, back in May, the Kennedy campaign said it turned in more than enough signatures to get on the New York State's ballot, but lawyers for the four voters who brought the case argue Kennedy's nominating petition listed a residence in New York, a New York City suburb, while Kennedy actually lives in Los Angeles. Kennedy's New York petitions list an address in Katona, New York. Lawyers say that address is the home of one of Kennedy's friends, not his, and therefore the signatures are not valid. Kennedy's lawyer said in a statement that his mail is delivered in Katona, plus his driver's fishing and falconry licenses are all from New York. Under state election law, the judge is set to decide the case without a jury. Kennedy's campaign has said he has enough signatures to qualify in 42 states so far. Kennedy is trying to fight back against all the negative media coverage, writing on X, quote, to the mainstream media, every time you write, quote, roadkill, I will mention dirty CIA regime change wars and our $35 trillion debt. Every time you write barbecued goat, I will invoke normalized government censorship. And the more you smear me, the more I'll keep speaking. Yeah, so look, we've, I criticized RFK Jr. earlier this week for exercising obvious bad judgment years ago with this whole bear situation that um, I think he knows was not a good uh, decision. But that is neither here nor there in terms of him being denied ballot access. Let's be very clear about what's happening here. Democrats, a Democratic aligned PAC, a PAC aligned with the Democratic Party that says this state, this the state of affairs is an existential threat to democracy, is using anti-democratic means to stop you from being able to vote for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. based on an absolute technicality that should not matter whatever. Who cares where his mail is delivered, where he has his falconry license? It's not, he's not trying, he doesn't need to establish residency to run. It's not like uh, he doesn't actually live in the district and so he can't run there. He's trying to be on the ballot in, in the state of New York as he is in the, should be on the ballot in every state in the country. The requirements to get on the ballot are very difficult if you're not already part of the, one of the two major established political parties or even part of the, the third parties, which are able to have um, a, not as easy a time as the Republicans or Democrats, but an easier time than an independent candidate, the Green Party, the Libertarian Party. Um, so RFK Jr. has had quite a task and he's doing that task. And the idea that you would disqualify him on this utter slight technicality. These are dirty tricks being pulled by Democrats who are afraid of him being on the ballot, afraid that I guess the people who were otherwise might have voted for Kamala are going to vote for RFK Jr., even though the data doesn't really bear that out. Mm -hmm. But um, it's an inc just rank hypocrisy, gamesmanship, very, very, very bad, and shame on them for doing it. Right. There's something to be said for, yes, you have a home state advantage if you're from the state, but no one's looking at the filings with the Secretary of State in New York and saying like, oh, this guy's from New York. I'll vote yeah, for him. Yeah, that doesn't matter. The home state advantage comes from people knowing you and your work in the state. And so I think it, it is silly and it, it feels wrong to see a PAC using this tactic to try and get someone off the ballot. Um, I understand that lying about where you live is a problem, but in this case, the, if they have enough signatures to get on the ballot, they should be on the ballot. But just talking about signatures necessary to get on the ballot, that is an arduous process. Yes, that the it secretary, costs money. It costs a ton of money that a lot of independent candidates don't have. It absolutely favors the two-party system because typically the secretary of state is a Republican or a Democrat. 
and they're going to look at independent candidates running for office, they have a lot of reasons for why they don't want to run against independents, and they're yeah. more likely to disqualify signatures, That's to question point. their authenticity. This is something that AOC struggled with when she was running against the party machine in major ways in New York. And so I, I think it's even a problem within the party during the primary process, not just when an independent candidate like RFK Jr. is running. So I think it's sad to see, you know, PACs put their political power in something like this uh, when they could just be, you know, argue against his message, promote your message. I think that's a more honest way of campaigning. So this, this is the dirty side of politics in my eyes. Yeah, great points. You have to get, if you're an independent candidate, you have to get approval. You have to dot all your I's, cross all your T's, do everything exactly perfectly correct because you ultimately are going to be subject to the scrutiny of people who are part of the two-party system, who the, who's the only thing they can agree on is that we're going to keep this a fight between Republicans and Democrats because that's the ground they're comfortable keeping the fight on. So if there is any reason to cast aside uh, uh, a, a signature, a petition signature from an independent candidate, they can take that option. And so this is a technicality they found. It is exceedingly silly. It is difficult. It costs money. It takes time. Time he could spend campaigning. Instead, he has to spend um, collecting signatures or you know, starting up a, a petition drive, a, an organization that can do that. Um, it takes time, money, and resources. And uh, now they're going to end up in you know court fighting about this. So mm -hmm. it, it should... It's, crystal clear it should just be allowed to that he should of course he should be on the ballot like the end result is what so then you won't have the option to vote for him for this reason um or you have to write his name in it's just it's really um it's really a a sham yeah a sham. i think that the other things that rhyme with am yeah <laughs> there should be a process for getting on the ballot that requires some indication there is support that people want to vote for you in the state, right? Mm -hmm. We can't just let anyone who wants to run for office get their name on the ticket, and then, you know, we spend so much money printing these very long ballots that look like <laughs> Looks CVS Looks like a receipt. CVS receipt? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we so, I think that... Yeah, we don't want it to look like know, a CVS receipt. Although we should default, I think it should default to it being... It doesn't need to be thousands of signatures. Right. Yeah, right. Maybe just a, a few in each major county, something like that. Something that's manageable in a weekend of work. Um, it would it be, be yeah. You it should would be verify better, the identities of, yeah. of who signs up, which is why it's such a long process, why it's so expensive. But it doesn't need to be as many names as they require. It would be better, in my view, it would be more democratic to lean toward having too many names on the ballot because the process is too simple than having too few names on the ballot because the process is really time consuming and expensive, right? Mm -hmm. If we're thinking about this in democratic fashion, I understand there need to be some set of standards so that you don't have, you know, you're looking out for duplicates. I know, I've known in local races sometimes, um, someone will find a, um, wants to find a person and get them to run who has a similar name to their opponent just to, so that there's two of the same looking names mm -hmm. on the ballot. That kind of stuff happens in local politics all the time. Well, fun dirty, fact. Dirty stuff. There was a very successful Nebraska football coach called Dan Osborne with an E at the end. And there is a chance people vote for Dan believing he was that very winning Nebraska football coach, oh. which is a, a very funny advantage that Dan Osborne has in Nebraska. I don't think that will credit his winning. Who we interviewed, by the way, today on Rising, very an good upcoming interview. segment uh, that, that we've released today. Please check that interview out. But I want to also mention, uh, in the state of New York, I you know lived in New York for a few years. It's the state where I you know first turned 18 where I was living. The way their ballots are organized is by party. There's like columns for each party. There's a working families sort of line. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people sort of vote down the line. And if you're not with any of the major parties in New York, you know, you don't get that same amount of prominence on the ticket. So where you're positioned in the ballot, there's some research that shows it matters. And I think it's, it's a little bit weird that it's a part of our democracy that the more you invest in the political process, the more prominent you can be on a ballot. And it, I just don't like when there's that trade-off of money into the electoral process. I don't know. We could mm. say, you know, the political and industrial system or, or what have you. But I think we spend way too much money on elections and politics. And the fact that you have to invest more to have a more favorable position is just a little bit icky to me. And so RFK Jr. should be on the ballot. 
he's a weird guy. Um, I think he got the brain worm maybe from eating bear meat or something, but make, make advertisements about that as a pack. Don't try and get him off the ballot on a technicality. Yes, icky indeed. More rising right after this.